All right, I apologize. Uh, I guess I went over the time limit on the first video, so this, uh, this is a quick follow-up. We're almost done, bear with me. Uh, part two of Baptism Saves, uh, we were discussing how the faith of the parents and of the church are accredited to an infant when they are baptized. And you're asking, where does it say that is even possible anywhere in the Bible? Well, if you know the story uh, in the first chapter of the Gospel of Mark, and also the synoptics all have this story, of when the paralytic is lowered through the roof of Peter's house and Jesus heals him, uh, it says that Jesus saw their faith and had compassion on the man. He doesn't say he saw the faith of the paralytic. He says he saw their faith, plural pronoun, their faith. So that means the faith of the people, especially the ones lowering the paralytic, along with the paralytic through the roof, moved Jesus to compassion. And then what did Jesus say to the paralytic? He said, your sins are forgiven. And then everybody got all, uh, they got their panties in a bunch. They got a big uproar and they say, who can forgive sins except for God alone? Uh, which is, aha, Jesus is God. They just didn't know it yet. Uh, so that's one example of how the faith of others uh, are accredited to one man's account. Uh, so the one man has his faith forgiven uh, by the faith of the others. And then there's another example where it says Jesus can only do a few miracles in his hometown because uh, they had a lack of faith. Uh, oftentimes in our individu individualistic American culture or Western culture, we like to isolate uh, things on an individualistic basis, uh, where if you really uh, read the gospel and the epistles in the New Testament, most of the pronouns are plural. So uh, it's more of a we and a us rather than an I. So it's, you know, it's our faith, not my faith. And anyway, faith is a gift from God. And why wouldn't God want to regenerate and save an infant anyway? So when he comes uh, to the age of reason, uh, that's why uh, the sacrament of Eucharist isn't uh, instituted until the age of reason. Uh, so first there's the catechism and the, uh, the teaching and instructing of the faith which is, goes along with the Great Commission, uh, teach and baptize all nations. Uh, so it doesn't have any exceptions. It doesn't say you have to be of the age of reason or when you can understand the faith. Because exactly, when exactly do you ever really understand the faith anyway? Think about it. If you've been a Christian for a great number of years, hopefully you understand a lot more now than when you first believed, than when you first gave your life to Christ. Uh, so you know, did, did you not really believe then because you don't know what you know now? I mean, that, that argument goes all the way back to childhood and stages of infancy. How much knowledge and understanding do you really have to know to be saved? Why can't uh, the sacrament of baptism do that? Through the faith of the church and the faith of the parents initially and then being raised up in the faith. That sounds perfectly reasonable and perfectly compatible with the scriptures and tradition. Okay, last quote from St. Cyprian on infant baptism. Even to the greatest sinners, quote, and to those who have sinned much against God, when they subsequently believe remission of sins is granted, nobody is hindered from baptism and from grace. How much more should we shrink from hindering an infant? For he, being lately born, has not sinned other than being born after the flesh according to Adam. He has contracted the contagion of the ancient death at its earliest birth. For this reason, he more easily approaches the reception of the forgiveness of sins. For to him are remitted not his own sins, but the sins of another. Therefore, dearest brother, this was our opinion in the council that no one should be hindered by us from baptism and from the grace of God. Close quote. So here, again, here's a, a reference to original sin and the sin of Adam. So yeah, the infant doesn't directly... He doesn't actively sin against God. He can't. He doesn't even know right from wrong. How can he sin against God? Well, the answer is he has the stain of original sin from Adam, and that needs to be taken care of via baptism. So he says, uh, uh, not his own sins are remitted, the sins of another, meaning the sins of Adam uh, are remitted via baptism. And he says, no, no one should be hindered from baptism and grace. 
So why, why would you prevent an in, infant from being baptized? It's like, it reminds you of the passage where Jesus says, suffer not, uh, the, the, I don't know, allow, allow the children to come to me. Don't, uh, don't prevent the children from coming to me, right? So at what age does Jesus to say, don't prevent the eight-year-olds from coming to me? Uh, 12-year-olds, uh, four-year-olds? No, he just says the children. Could be anyone, two, three, one, right? The, that doesn't specify, why not? So with that in mind, so then comes the question, well, what if an infant dies and is not baptized? Uh, well, the Catholic Church has not defined any dogma on that issue. The general consensus of uh, the fathers and you know through the ages is that they go to a place referred to as limbo. Uh, the biblical equivalent of limbo would be the bosom of Abraham, referred to by Jesus in Luke chapter 16. A place in the netherworld, a place uh, where there is comfort and joy, uh, but they don't see God. So they don't go to hell, they don't go to purgatory. Uh, they go to a place where there is joy and comfort, uh, but they don't see, have the beatific vision of God. That's, uh, that's the most consistent uh, tradition of the Catholic Church. Uh, others believe that God might give them an extraordinary grace and permit them to go to heaven. It's possible. Uh, I'm not against that idea. If God wants to do that, uh, who am I to disagree? Uh, but... Uh, the scripture doesn't say one way or the other. Uh, someone might say, well, David refers to his infant child who died that I will go to him after I die. Well, heaven wasn't opened during the life of David, so when that was a reference to Sheol, or the bosom of Abraham, according to faith, the faith of David. So that's the teaching. So should you baptize your infants as soon as possible? Yes, baptize your infants as soon as possible. Uh, don't tarry, don't wait, so you can get all your relatives uh, together uh, from out of town. Uh, do it as soon as possible. Why, why would you prevent that great gift of God through the sacrament of baptism? So uh, hopefully this uh, appeals to everyone's satisfaction. I used the scriptures pretty thoroughly. I used uh, the earliest Christians, what they believed, and as far as my research can tell, I could not find one early Christian who disagreed uh, that baptism was necessary for salvation, uh, unless you want to count heretics, uh, I don't. So hopefully uh, that is sufficient for you to be persuaded to believe in the Catholic position, the old world theology position, that baptism is the first and foremost sacrament to become a Christian, to be born again, to be regenerated, and to have eternal life, the hope of eternal life. So God bless. Nomine Patri, Filii, Spiriti Sancti. Amen.